happened once in uh, Brazil, in Blumenau. And there, my friend here, Amadeo, had two talks about Gaudi. <coughs> there I was, I was, you know, we had two talks about the lead, and then we uh, were talking about Arces uh, and so on. And about uh, the projection of Gaudi into the contemporary century. But uh, at a given moment of the my first talk, the following uh, slide appears. Here you can see uh, some, uh, in, uh, among other things, some arches of uh, Gaudi. Uh, and uh, accidentally I commented a few things. Many, many texts refer to those arches as parabolical catenaries, but uh, it seems to be used as a random words. In the case of the corridor of the Lesianes convent, I have already feel that the arches are a parabolic one. But in the case of uh, Palauwin's gate, we, uh, we will see later, I have tried uh, several arches, but no one fits. And then we have uh, somebody, uh, a good man stop. I said it was a catenary action. <laughs> <laughs> and I said it is not, because <laughs> you know, I have proved pro it and, and it wasn't. But I said it was a catenary <laughs> <laughs> And I again insisted it was. It is. With so screen. he asked me, please explain. Actually, the slides that are with the black background are mine, with the white are yours. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I tried to explain it because um, I just. I was just, I don't know much about Gaudi, but I know something about curve fitting. I've done this in university like you have. So I was wondering, how should curve fitting be done? How do you do that? Well, I remembered this. In celestial mechanics, when you have different points, you use a least square method or another method. It doesn't matter, actually. But for instance, if you would use the least square method, if you would have those points, if it would be in a, uh, the orbit of a planet or something, and we know Gauss, the method of Gauss, what would you do? You would try to find the best fitting ellipse, and if you have the best fitting ellipse, you would say that it fits, say, at 95% or 98%. And if it's at 99, you would say, well, that's even better than the one of 98. So, if you do this method, you could, for instance, also use this not for, not for a planet, but also for the Mona Lisa. And in this way, you could, for instance, decide that in the Mona Lisa, you don't see any golden section. You see a proportion of 1.53. So I just observe what I see. I just say, well, what are the points that I see? And I can also do this with students. I can ask many people, just indicate the points that you think are the most important. Then I do a statistical test on that, and then I decide what the proportion is. So here, for instance, the proportion is not the golden section, because here I have to contradict the previous speaker. Da Vinci did not know about the golden section before he illustrated the book of Pacioli, for instance. Of course, that doesn't mean anything. He could have used the golden section unconsciously, but if you do analysis like this, you don't see any golden section in there. Okay, so now back to um, uh, Kepler, uh, well, something else about, about effectively that method of Gauss. Kepler, for instance, is known to have decided with the observations of Tycho Brahe that the orbits of um, um, planets were ellipses instead of a circle. Now, we must say that actually he didn't have much of a point statistically, because uh, it was almost, the orbits with the data he had were almost circles. And, but still he concluded it was an ellipse. So even famous mathematicians sometimes force their observations of their data a little bit. It aren't just artists. <coughs> okay, if you have a nuclear plant, for instance, that's a famous just. example. <laughs> you say just artists? Try to find if on a nuclear plant, if it's uh, hyperbola, uh, that's a well-known example in textbooks in high school. But if I do that, I find that the best fitting curve is an ellipse, not a hyperbola. And if, if I do that, I see statistically these squares, I get 98% it's an ellipse. Then I ask an engineer, is that true? Well, an engineer said, yes, indeed, it's true, because we change the top a little bit to make it uh, fit better to wind. So it's not, actually it's not even designed as a hyperbola, but yet you find it in different textbooks. So I was very happy that an engineer could confirm this. Uh, and I made a little paper about this in Nexus about curve fitting in architecture. 
So for Gaudi, for instance, I did the same thing. I said, okay, let me indicate the most important points. And I looked as if this was were some data from wherever, whatever domain. And I could decide here that the curve fitting result that I had, that Amadeo, he could confirm this because I saw that the hyperbolic cosine fitted at 99.988, while a parabola fitted at 99.9 as well. So if Amadeo says that, well, you cannot see if it's a parabola or a hyperbolic cosine, I agree because they both fit, those two both fit at 99.98%. So you cannot decide it. Okay. Now, as for the uh, Palo-Gale, he will pronounce it much better than I do. Um, I tried that too. I tried the hyperbol hyperbolic cosine. It fits at 99.8. I, I tried the closest parabola, and it fits at 99. At 96%. Uh, so the hyperbolic cosine is better. So I said, well, that's my conclusion. And in, if you make a drawing, the parabola does not fit. So this is what I was saying. I said, well, okay, that's what I found. So I said, it is, here in this case, it is indeed. And he said, no, it's not the hyperbolic cosine. Actually, he said, it's not the catenary. And I said, it is. And uh, we went one more step. Uh, okay. And fortunately, this happened in Brazil. So in Brazil, everyone is very happy. So we, didn't have, we didn't have much of a fight or a discussion. We immediately we discussed a lot. So actually, we first, first we found an agreement. I was talking about a hyperbolic cosine combination. I was talking about y equals a number c plus b times cosine, hyperbolic cosine of x divided by a. And he was talking about... <coughs> I was talking about the, about the true catenary uh, as solution of a differential equation, which is only a um, homotopy of uh, a possible hyperbolic, except for uh, translation for sanity. So I accept that I was partially wrong. Difference is only in because it was, not really, and it was not really a catenary in, this, in the way you meant it. <laughs> but still, maybe I was partially wrong. I thought that maybe Gaudi designed his catenaries, not maybe as catenaries, like you can see here, that are chains that are hanging. But if you visit the Sagrada Familia, or if you look at his work, you see that he sometimes modifies it, because on his chain, he puts extra weights. So they are funicular curves, and not really catenaries. And also, if you construct it, if you construct the uh, catenary, you see, for instance, that on the top there, they adapt little things. So I'm not sure that when they, when they construct the catenary, that if, wow, well, the concrete or whatever pushes on it, that it stretches a little bit or shrinks or whatever. So there's a dip, can be a difference between an idea that you want to construct a catenary and with what you actually see. Up to you. And then I, I come back to Spain. I was wondering about the uh, Gaudi curves. Yeah? And I was wondering about uh, some next procedure to resolve this question, but uh, I was interested to, um, rather than by a method who gives a psychological com uh, com uh, convincement, uh, rather than uh, uh, technological demonstration. demonstration. <coughs> and so, for, uh, for that method, uh, I had uh, previous assumptions, uh, were welding houses, uh, the position uh, of the wood from the architect to the builder are uh, not so, so good as, uh, for, for instance, for, uh, in a piston of an uh, engine or so on. Uh, so uh, I think if uh, we visually uh, towards conceive, uh, we can accept that they are the same. And due to the surrounding constraints, uh, I think the width and the height of the are, are, are established before the good side is set. According to that, and conform the, to the new style, yeah, I focus to uh, access only the type body or catenary. Okay. With symmetry and with three, uh, two, uh, two data, uh, that is the white, uh, the, the basis, and the height. And uh, such a uh, method, who provide uh, two things: an application that uh, by this uh, which uh, we can uh, produce the curves to, to check, and uh, a procedure to confront one of the previous charts with the actual display in a photograph. The application 
should be should have uh, two uh, parts. Choose the type of R and provide the determining points. I said uh, the types of uh, arts we are looking for are catenary, parabolic, circular, or uh, conic in general. And the determining points are uh, the two points of the basis and mm, point to determine the, the plane of, of uh, the arch because it can be in 3D in space. A point to determine uh, by projection the, the height of the arch. And, um, and in the case of uh, in the case of uh, catenary parabolic or circle, there, there is enough to determine uh, the arc. But if if one if you want an conic arc, we need uh, provide to provide an uh, additional uh, data. It could be or a, a passing point or a coefficient uh, greater than uh, minus one. That you can see here uh, the the rule of the, this coefficient. Uh, if the coefficient is between minus one or uh, to one, we will get an ellipse. Uh, it could be uh, circles if the measures are, uh, are suitable. If the W is what one, we get a parabola, and for later values of the W, we get a hyperbola. Uh, here we can see the effect of uh, that the varying W uh, on an, uh, as an arch of a given uh, width and height. Uh, remember the values of W. Uh, all of these uh, provide, uh, come from a, a half a circle uh, to which we apply a projective uh, transformation. Here we can, uh, we can see an, an example of an arch uh, constructed uh, on, on 3D using the points of a framework and wireframe uh, of an hyperbolic of one sheet, uh, hyperbolic of one sheet. Uh, even uh, the program can provide the, the user uh, the information about the, the arch produce and um, about the procedure to check our uh, Gaudi's access, we have to insert the, uh, a picture uh, uh, with a front view in, in a CAD uh, program, determine visually the top point P sub, uh, P sub 1, trace a circle to find the basis point, uh, trace uh, some lines uh, to have end points to, to ask them. And, and now the user can try to find uh, uh, any of the answers of the previous application to the actual art. Many examples can be provided if I were, I were in my computer. But, and, uh, here uh, we have uh, the example of the Teresian uh, convent uh, in which uh, the left is a, a picture only and to the right we have uh, um, proved in red line, in red color, the catenary arc, and in the green color, the parabolic one. Okay. You can see the, the parabolic fits uh, exactly the arc. You have to remind that uh, in the case of uh, there, the, the, the less squares don't, uh, don't assure uh, the pass the for, for the basis and the top point. Uh, let's go to see one of them was if I, wa I had my computer, but I can go a moment to a fixed uh, picture. Just a moment. This this is uh, well, I had uh, I. I we should to, to, um, to perform uh, how to program for, uh, in place, but I have to show you a fixed uh, picture. This is an arch of the attic uh, of uh, the Valdeo uh, house. Yeah. And uh, if you look uh, by internet uh, and so on, people say that this arch is parabolic, catenary, and so on. But I have to try it. And the best uh, cure is not uh, catenary nor, nor later catenary nor uh, parabola, but it's an hyperbola. This hyperbola has been drawn by the previous program. Mm -hmm. Can I see the whole picture 
the Archer case, for example, you take a picture like this, a parabola. If it was a parabola in space, it would appear as a hyperbola. Yes, Because it's not, uh, the optical axis is not horizontal. You can see it here. <laughs> the blue line is, is the hyperbola. The red is the parabola, and the green is uh, a catenary. You can decide which of the three curves uh, fit uh, better. I, uh, uh, until I, I know, uh, nobody has uh, commented or uh, suggested that this has to be uh, uh, hyperbolic. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to repeat this, it was a parabola. Was it was appear as a hyperbola in this case, the image. No, no, this is for that. This picture is not from that. If it's the original picture, if this is the original, I wanted to ask. If this is the original picture, then the optical axis is not horizontal. But I think that even if it is just a bit turned, if it were a parabola, it follow follow it will be a parabola. Because about the well, in, 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 in vertical projection is is still a power. No, yeah, which can also be a or only if, if you had a, a projective type from the projections, but uh, parallel projections uh, keep the, the power. No, it's okay, as long as the optical axis is really measured for example, yeah. if you really do it with a... Well, uh, in, in the future I can go to this house and, and take the measures and take it away. But I think it's a parabola, because a parabola uh, has a, a, another curve If you look, uh, this curve is the curve of the parabola. Yeah. The curve of the parabola is the curve of the parabola. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, this, this part of art tends to be uh, so straight to be a parabola, I think. So, you took your data points from a photograph, is that what you're saying? In the present photograph. Did, does anybody know what Gaudi was thinking? Did Gaudi have some particular preference for conic sections or what? No, I don't know. He's a pretty organic guy in general. That's in some of your documentation. Well, but I think this, this uh, part of the art is to uh, slide to be a parabola. Yeah, uh, easy, uh, but just be careful with the photo. Yeah. But I, I agree with, it can't be a parabola. I mean, it's, it's too straight. You yeah. can see that. Yeah, yeah. It tends to be an asymptote. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Well, she's saying there are asymptotes. Mm -hmm. Parabola does not have asymptotes. Neither does it have any. Well, you can see here the, the little part of the little guy. The uh, value is 2.47 uh, parallel, by the way, 1 is uh, the one value between ellipse and the parallel. Well, we come to, to power point. But uh, let's focus uh, on a special case. Uh, the gates of uh, Palau Wells in Barcelona. There is a doors that, uh, uh, again, people have said that uh, parabolic catenary uh, as uh, synonymous. Uh, what is the origin of this question between the and me? Uh, I have tried again to, um, to fit uh, the arches of my application, and none one of the possible arches have fit it. You can see in red the category, in green the parabola, uh, in Siam the circle, uh, and even the conic, which has, been, which has been forced to pass by a passing point on, on the top, don't fit uh, so well. But others maintain that it has this category, uh, at least in some relaxed sense. In the case of the uh, category, um, given the points and Special P2 and, and P1. Uh, the computation is, is a transcendental equation, it's not a non linear equation, 
but uh, but uh, in my application it will be uh, a shift. But in the case of uh, this parabola, we have uh, we we uh, we are going to try uh, to prove a uh, stress array with a scale factor in the uh, the uh, in the vertical axis. We have we made some calculations with Maple. This was the result, and we, uh, we come back to the picture, and we see the new art uh, uh, that uh, fit very well the door of, of this palace. In fact, it's, uh, it's a stress category uh, coming from that uh, black uh, color in a factor about uh, one quarter. So, um, uh, finally, I was true because uh, it is not a catenary, but uh, there was true because uh, it's a stretch catenary. So, for instance, here uh, you can see that on the bottom it's a little bit skewed, it's not really a proper picture. It's actually, I don't mind. I just say I have this picture here. What is the curve that I see? Is it promptly or not? So I put my data there. And I see that if I look at this picture, promptly or not, or whatever, if I put data on it, the way I see it, when I'm in a good mood, and maybe when I'm in a bad mood, I put the data on it, just like an astronomer would do. Sometimes his eyes hurt, and he doesn't observe that well. On another day, it's raining. The observations are maybe wrong, too. So here in architecture, this can happen, too. So you have several data, and what you see, uh, this hyperbolic cosine fits at 99.8%. But it did not go through the top. That's not a problem to me. The curve doesn't have to go to, through all the points. There's, a, there's no need for that. For instance, the top can be the hardest part to construct. Now, if, like uh, Amadeo is doing, if you want to make that top more important, you can do that. You can easily give more weight to the top. You can say, for instance, let's count the top 10 times. That is, give it a weight of 10. What happens then? The formula changes a little bit. And you can see that now the difference is only um, zero point, uh, zero point zero one. Now you get if x is zero. So that if you do this once more, you can count the top twenty times. You can say it has to go through the top. Really, it's an important top. Where it's twenty times more important than the other points. Uh, for in his case, for instance, he gives it a weight of almost infinity. He says it goes through the top. Sure, I say twenty. Well, then the difference one point six, one point three six is. Zero. So then it will go to the top with this curve. And again, you can decide at what percentage it's true or not. So this is the way I would like uh, to work. Um, and <coughs> he, he made another problem that the equations may be not nonlinear. That's true. If you have the formula um, A times the cosine of x divided by A, you have the A within the cosine, the hyperbolic cosine, and you have the A in front of it. But there again, that's no problem. You use Bama, you use polynomials, of course. Eh? So you will try to fit a polynomial, and instead of a hyperbolic cosine, you do that. And if you do that, you see that uh, the answer is something like this, where x has a 10 exponent minus 16, and x cubed minus 13, and x to the fifth minus 13. So this makes us think of the series of a uh, hyperbolic cosine. So again, uh, this gives you the idea that Maybe the A should be 6.5. Oh, it doesn't fit that well. That happens. It doesn't have to be 6.5 every time. So this gives you the, the way to get such a hyperbolic cosine. So actually, I don't see the point. I don't see why they don't do that this way. Because today, uh, you could have said, well, 50 years ago, uh, this was too difficult. You have to compute too much, all those statistics, just for an arc of, of, uh, of Gauli. <coughs> <laughs> so it's a lot of work, but today you can't do that, you can't say that anymore, because you use a program like Mathematica and they solve that in less than a second. So it's as easy as graphing as what he did. <laughs> well, as, and sure. let just, me, at this point, yeah. you should appeal to 120 years ago, 50 years ago, the stone virus cross theorem said that that any family of functions which separates points suffices to give an arbitrarily close approximation to any presumably continuous function which is 
the, the exponent, well, the, the power uh, is not integrated. Uh, and, uh, so, and this is too strange to use in the biology. And by the way, the conclusion was the same. Even if you use super ellipses for the Mona Lisa, you still see no golden section, 1.5. So there was no, no need for me to extend it from a simple ellipse to a super ellipse and make it more complicated than necessary. I was wondering if you um, made the ellipse not where you see the flesh of the face, but on um, points on either side of the eye. So that the face itself, if it was frontal, would conform better to if you want it to be. I don't see any reason why you make the face a, a golden section face anyway. Uh, more importantly, how is it placed within the pages of the picture frame? But um, if, you, if you place your points, here and here, outside the eye, would it make a difference? Maybe. It would so make it longer, and therefore it would be more approximating. Maybe, but so if someone wants to do that, and if someone does that and shows that in that way it's a golden section, I would say, okay, I agree. Okay. But other, otherwise, if they just <coughs> glue a rectangle on it, and if they make it fit a little bit, then I cannot agree, because it's magic, it comes out of my loop. Well, I agree with that. I was, I was wondering, did, did you... I know you do, Christopher. <laughs> we did that together, by the way, for what he showed in his painting. Together we did little tests like that. Yeah. So we could. Yeah. When you are collecting your data from photographs, one concern was what George mentioned, the, the axis of the, the lens, the optical axis. But you have a concern about the distortion of the type of lens you use. Yeah. Uh, I didn't use any lens because I pick uh, this picture from from the website and, and I don't know how this picture was made. But I think if you see again, then even uh, although although uh, this picture is not perfect, uh, the difference between the parabola in red and the arch is too large to be attributed to the photo. The photograph is is uh, rather good, uh, I think. It's not perfect, but it's rather good, and the difference in the, in between the red line and the true arch is too large to be because uh, the distortion of the photo. And in, 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 uh, uh, but uh, the, the, red, the blue uh, line fits uh, exactly. Actually, to me, it even not. even if the photo is not perfect. Actually, I wouldn't uh, mind. To me, the conclusion could be, with the naked eye, it's a hyperbola, and through a lens, it's a whatever. So, then that would be the conclusion. Uh, yeah. I think it's possible it could be lens distortion, but on Gowdy's work, how did he communicate with whoever was still, did he make plan drawings, or did he actually make a small model of a building, or what? He used hanging models. So probably here uh, he made a uh, plan, but uh, I don't know if uh, people can see uh, this plan, so I will lost. It's a family used more uh, models with uh, plans. Uh, but uh, what about the uh, the photo itself? Did you use any other uh, model to make the photo? So much information was lost uh, when the, the beginning of the Civil War, because was burning. Uh, what, what, what so you're saying he made clay models of the building? Yeah. Oh, parts, of, of parts, yes, certainly important parts. Uh, that, that's how he communicated with the, the people that were doing the construction. Is that the way he communicated with, through his models? Or did he communicate through written, written uh, drawings? I can try it. Actually, when we were in Brazil, we discussed with this with someone else, with uh, Claudia Alcina, who wrote books about uh, Gaudi, and it would actually confirm what I was saying, that indeed he made drawing of hyperbola and so on. And Claudia Alcino, Alcino is uh, an architect in Barcelona, is known as to be the specialist. Uh, there was an exhibition in, in Austria and in Vienna about how architecture set up in mind. And um, there was a comparison about um, some architects go first through the model and then sketch. And some sketch first and then go into the model. And there, 
they presented Gaudi as going through first the model. I don't know. You're not so or brand. In any case, for what we try to decide about is when you see it, what is it? It could be that he made whatever perfect model and that the mason or whoever who had to construct it made some mistakes or whatever, or through the warm or heat that it deformed. So what do you see now, with a lens or without a lens? Is it a hyperbolic cosine or is it a parabola? Yeah. Many textbooks for Gaudi say that in almost all cases it are advantages because they think of the model in a rather familiar. And that is not true. He also used hyperbola and as you said, parabola. Mm -hmm. Well, catenary is very strange. It's obviously an upside down catenary. Where's the gravitational potential? It's reversed, so yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't make sense. It makes sense. It's the best shape to, for example, bridges to turn the catenary upside down. And who gets by a different Yeah. Uh, I'm amazed of uh, your approach, I have to say, and the accuracy you get. Because if you digitalize at some point, you don't have the accuracy to begin with. Yes, but the accuracy doesn't actually statistically doesn't play a role. You all the errors you uh, average them out. So actually it's not even important as they sometimes learn to students to use only a few digits after the decimal point. If you just no, I think it is better to to study and to begin I mean, to study this uh, type of this type of problem than only copy the text of other authors. Uh, the problem is that somebody write and this article is parabolic or this article is catenary, and uh, other people was uh, copying and, and repeating uh, the mistake without checking that. Uh, I think it's uh, better to to, to begin to. Uh, to confront which answers uh, use uh, the audience in, in fact. Of course, the overwhelming issue about Gaudi's architecture is it's all negative Gaussian curvature. <laughs> 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 and he uses um, often hyperbolates and parabolates. But these are, uh, uh, this is on the curve, that's the answer basis. You are right. Are these arches structural or are they ornamental? Uh, I think it's structural, and, but uh, it's very strange because uh, if I were, maybe it was a shock of you know, the... Some are structural uh, and some are ornamental. In his windows, they are sometimes purely or ornamental. Some windows, yeah. But not, not, not all the arches in, in, in this uh, in this attic, attic is uh, 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 uh the, there, you can see another arch the, that uh, surely is, is parabolic or catenary. There are many arches. Uh, I think he was playing with, uh, with uh, conics and, and catenary. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've worked with enough carpenters building things that there's nothing more annoying to a carpenter than having to follow a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, do we know anything about how they constructed things? I mean. The, if I wanted to design that, I would hang a chain up and then, you know, as my model and then just take measurements from, you know, the floor to the chain, turn that upside down and, and if I was the guy that was hired, do we know anything about how they thought through construction? Uh, another way, I've, I've always been struck by how clever carpenters are at, uh, uh, you know, getting to the results, which it sometimes can be more clever than the architect who designed it. Uh, far more. Do we know anything about how masons do this sort of thing? To yeah, sometimes, uh, like in this building, this here, he made the 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 catenary and reversed it, uh, but not uh, not uh, in every in every way everywhere. <coughs> uh, uh, I think he uh, was looking. Uh, for aesthetical reasons too. Yeah. If, if the structure is not so so critical, we can we could uh, make uh, another uh, another proof. I think we should continue the discussion in the fourth floor with the yeah. small I, I have coffee because it's a big one. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you for the